God bless you. The Passover is coming very soon now. Then what is it that we must do in order to keep the Passover? In the Old Testament times, those who were not circumcised were not qualified to keep the Passover. Then in the New Testament times, are those who are not baptized qualified to keep the Passover? So today, we are going to study what kind of meaning is contained in baptism. Of course, we all know that baptism contains the promise of the forgiveness of sins and salvation. Since baptism contains salvation and the forgiveness of sins, it must be better to be baptized as soon as possible, right? So the Church of God baptizes people immediately. However, many Babylon churches baptize people six months or a year later. They have to study many things and complete some courses until they can be baptized. However, baptism is one of the laws of God which must be carried out without delay. Let us suppose that a patient was brought to the emergency room at a hospital. What if a doctor examines the patient and says, I will study his case for about a year and then begin to treat him? Does this make sense? For an emergency patient, the doctor has to take emergency measures. Baptism is like an emergency treatment. So our Church of God baptizes whoever wants to be baptized immediately because this is the teaching of the Bible. So today, let's study the reason why baptism should be conducted immediately through the Bible. Let's take a look at Romans chapter 6, verse 22. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, the benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is what? You have been set free from sin. The benefit you reap leads to holiness, and the result is eternal life. Let's see verse 23. For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin means a decision of a judge which he makes based on the sin after examining the seriousness of the sin. If a man violates a traffic law, he may be fined $300. If a man commits an outrageous crime, he may be sentenced to 10 years imprisonment. So there are different sentences for different sins. But as for us, we were sentenced to death for our sins. Then, our sins are not small at all. They are extremely big. Since we are sentenced to death, we can understand that we committed unforgivable sins. These grave sins that deserve the death penalty can be called capital crimes. Usually, we call people who are sentenced to death death row inmates. Death row inmates do not know when their execution will be carried out. It may be today, or tomorrow, or it may be a month later. God's children who committed capital crimes do not know when their execution will be carried out. If there was a way to give us the forgiveness of sins, God would want to save us through that way as soon as possible, wouldn't He? So we should baptize people without delay because we do not know when the spiritual death sentence will be carried out. The baptism ceremony contains the love of God who wants people to be baptized and receive the forgiveness of sins as soon as possible. Let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 27, verse 1. Do not boast about tomorrow. How come we cannot boast about tomorrow? What state are we in spiritually? We are sinners who cannot be forgiven just by punishment with a fine. It is written that the wages of our sin is death. For death row inmates, there is no such thing as tomorrow. If the death sentence is carried out today, everything ends today. 
people who are living as if they were righteous, forgetting that they are sinners, they may say, I will be baptized three or six months later, or sometimes later after studying more. However, if we realize that we are angels who were hurled down to this earth after committing grave sins, which were capital crimes in heaven, we can never boast about tomorrow. That is why it is written in Proverbs chapter 27, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do not know what a day may bring forth. Here it says, You do not know what a day may bring forth. In the Gospel of Luke chapter 12, Jesus gives the same teaching as this. Let us turn to Luke chapter 12, verse 16. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man produced a good crop. He thought to himself, What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, This is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store all my grain and my goods. And I'll say to myself, You have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, You fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Here, we can see that a man says to himself that he will take life easy, since he has plenty of good things laid up for many years, even though he is a mere heavenly sinner who cannot boast about tomorrow. Then God said to him, You fool! You do not realize who you are. As soon as God gives out the command from heaven, the punishment will be carried out immediately. We do not know when that day will come. That day can be today, an hour later, or even ten minutes later. But the rich man thought, I have plenty of good things laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat and drink. Without realizing that he had committed a grave sin in heaven that deserves a death penalty, he thought that he would live in peace and safety always. However, God says, You are not someone who can boast about tomorrow. How come you do not know yourself? So sometimes, though a wife says goodbye, and sees her husband going to work in the morning, he might get in a car accident on his way to work. Once, a fire broke out in a subway train, and people died of suffocation or burned to death by the fire because they could not get out of the train. No one could predict such a miserable accident. That is why God said, Do not boast about tomorrow. Nowhere in the records of the prophets in the Bible can we find a case where they delayed baptism for six months or a year. Everybody was baptized immediately. Let us go to Acts chapter 8, verse 26. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, And on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. Seeing the man reading the scripture, Philip went near him and asked, Do you understand what prophet Isaiah was talking about here? Then the eunuch said, How can I unless someone explains it to me? Then Philip began with that very passage of the scripture and told him all things about Jesus. Let's see what happened after Philip explained it to him. Verse 35. Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, Look here is water. Why shouldn't I be what? Be baptized. 
And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, according to the record here, the Ethiopian eunuch was an important official who was in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. In modern terms, he is referred to as the finance minister of a country. It's not easy for a person in a high position to be baptized on the road because people who are passing by might see him. He could have said, let's move to a better place, a clean place. I want to be baptized there. God was very anxious to save the eunuch. So what did God do? God changed his mind so that he could be baptized immediately. From a spiritual point of view, the eunuch was an emergency patient in critical condition. We must not neglect patients in critical condition or put off the treatment. In order to save the eunuch of Candace, the Holy Spirit moved him. So like this, God gave him a gracious heart, and as they found water traveling along the road, Philip baptized the eunuch and came up out of the water. How did Philip baptize him? Did he delay baptism for three or six or seven months? Or a year? We must recognize that to delay baptism is not the will of God at all. Spiritually, baptism is an extremely urgent matter. Unless people are baptized, they cannot take off the burden of sin. Unless they take off the burden of sin, they will be accompanied by the eternal punishment of fire in hell forever. So it was for our salvation that God commanded us to be baptized immediately, wasn't it? So God's love is contained in His command. Let us continue reading Acts chapter 10, verse 48. So He ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. This is a scene where Peter baptized Cornelius and his relatives. Let's see how Peter baptized them in verse 40. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in Him receives forgiveness of sins through His name. Like this, Apostle Peter testified about Jesus to Cornelius and his family. Verse 44, While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Can anyone keep these people from being baptized with water? They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So we ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. In Acts chapter 10, we can see how Cornelius' family was baptized immediately altogether. Here, it was Cornelius and Peter's first time to meet each other just as it was the first time for the eunuch of Candace and Philip to meet each other. Though they all met each other for the first time, God allowed them to be baptized immediately through the work of the Holy Spirit. Since people always carry their sins that deserve the death penalty, they are all destined to die if we do nothing about it as soon as possible. This is an extremely urgent state that all people in this global village are put in today. When a 7.1 magnitude earthquake hit Japan, were people able to predict it an hour or two hours before it happened? Before this, a 9.0 magnitude earthquake also occurred and many people died. No one could predict it at all. Unpredictable situations are occurring in the global village. If then, is there any other opportunity for them to repent on this earth? They come to lose such opportunities. 
Today, all people of the world are spiritually in this kind of critical situation. Because they do not realize this, they just think like the rich man who said, I will take life easy, eat and drink. This is how the people of the world think today. God allowed Cornelius and the eunuch of Cannes to realize that they were put in such an urgent situation. That is why they were baptized right away. And the disciples too, when they had to baptize someone, they gave baptism immediately without delaying it. Whose will is it? It is all God's will. Let's trace back to the faith of the early church and see how baptism was performed in that age through the book of Acts. Let's see Acts chapter 16, verse 29. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. We are familiar with this scene. While preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, Paul and Silas were thrown into prison on a charge of preaching the gospel by the crowd of people who were jealous of them. But even in prison, they sang praise to God and gave glory to Him. Then, suddenly, an earthquake occurred at that time. The earth was greatly shaken and the prison doors flew open. As the jailer thought, all prisoners must have escaped. He drew his sword and was about to kill himself. The reason why he was about to kill himself was because in the old days, if a prisoner escaped, the jailer in charge had to atone for the prisoner's sin with death. For this reason, the jailer drew his sword and was about to kill himself, thinking that all prisoners had fled. However, Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself, we are all here. After calming the jailer down, Paul delivered the good news about Christ to him. Let's continue with verse 31. They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his family were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. Two thousand years ago, they didn't have electricity like we do now. Think about how dark it must have been at night back then. What about the place? Here, baptism for the jailer and his family was carried out in an unholy place where criminals were staying. The jailer could have been baptized in a clean and holy place the next day. However, as Jesus had given us a parable of the rich man, this very night your life will be demanded from you. He did not wait till morning. When he gained realization, he also led his whole family to be baptized. The Bible says, the jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. Here too, Paul and the jailer had never met each other before. However, when the jailer realized Christ, after listening to the gospel for the first time, what did he do first? He was baptized immediately. Let's see the case of Lydia. Let's turn to Acts chapter 16, verse 13. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth from the city of Thyatira, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. After listening to the gospel, what did she do next? When Paul preached to the women who had gathered by the river while looking for a place of prayer, God opened the heart of Lydia. God gave her the Holy Spirit and said to her, Lydia, you are so blessed by God. Break the chain of sin and come out of it quickly. God is only concerned about our salvation. A system or worship ceremony is also important, but God regards our salvation as most important. 
As soon as Lydia's heart was opened, what did she do immediately? When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house, and she persuaded us. We must not judge people by our own thoughts thinking. I think it will take about 10 months for this person to be baptized and about 6 months for that person. Wherever the disciples were led by the Holy Spirit, they baptized people immediately. They did so so that their souls could come to salvation. When we look into the history of the early church, we can find many good examples of the disciples regarding baptism. While preaching, When we recommend people to be baptized, many of them say, Oh, but I've already been baptized. There are also teachings of the early church about those who say, I've already been baptized. Some say that they were baptized when they were infants. Some say that they were baptized in the Catholic Church. And others say that they were baptized in Protestant churches. Knowing that, many people would say that God left the related teachings in the Bible as follows. Let's go to Acts chapter 19, verse 1. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and asked them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? They answered, No. We have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, Then what baptism did you receive? John's baptism, they replied. Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. Did they refuse to be baptized again since they had been baptized before? No. They were baptized again after realizing Christ correctly. On hearing this, they were baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them. Even those who had been baptized by John were baptized again in the name of Jesus. Shouldn't we be baptized in the new name? Of course we must. In this age, baptism must be done in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And where do we have to be baptized? Only the baptism performed in Zion can lead us to the forgiveness of sins and salvation because God promised and guaranteed salvation in Zion. Let's find out what promise of God is contained in baptism. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for what? For the forgiveness of sins. Baptism has the promise of the forgiveness of sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. We will receive the blessing of the Holy Spirit. That is not all. Let's go to Mark chapter 16, verse 15. He said to them, Go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be what? Will be saved. Through baptism, God promised to give us the forgiveness of sins, salvation, and the gift of the Holy Spirit. And also, God made the baptism ceremony very simple. Everybody, baptism also contains the meaning of the death of Christ on the cross. Jesus Christ was crucified, stayed in the tomb for three days, and was resurrected on the third day. These three things are contained in baptism. When a sinner listens to the truth and realizes it, he comes to repent before God, saying, Please forgive all my past sins. Just as Jesus Christ was crucified on the cross, our body of sin must be crucified too, shouldn't it? Just as Jesus was buried in the tomb, what should we also do with water? We should bury all our past sins in water. Just as Jesus was resurrected from the tomb, when we come out of the water, we are born again with a new life, and all our body of sin is destroyed. Baptism contains this meaning.
So for us sinners who committed sins that deserve eternal death in the kingdom of heaven, God opened the way to truly repent of our sins and to participate in His holy salvation. This is the baptism ceremony. In order to forgive our sins, Jesus Christ sacrificed Himself so much. He went through so much suffering and pain and agony. Have you all seen the movie, The Passion of the Christ? God the Creator was mocked and ridiculed by His creation. He was flogged, and His flesh was torn off. Every moment was terribly painful for Him. Since Jesus already foresaw what was going to happen and how He would suffer all these things, when He went to Gethsemane with His disciples after keeping the Passover, He prayed. When he prayed, he said, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. When he thought of the suffering which he would have to endure, it was something truly unbearable. Although Jesus came to this earth to save all mankind, he prayed those words. This shows how horrible his pain would be. If it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. After Jesus prayed like that, He added something that breaks our hearts. Yet, He said this afterwards, Yet not as I will, but as you will. The great agony and suffering of Jesus is contained in the baptism ceremony. Jesus prayed in great agony, Yet not as I will, but as you will. After praying like this, he received every kind of slander, ridicule, and scorn, and in the end, passed away by shedding his blood on the cross. People put a crown of thorns on his head, offered him sour wine to drink mixed with gall. They flogged him and pierced his side with a spear. Through these sufferings, Christ established the way to the forgiveness of sins. God went through such extreme pain and suffering. Through His suffering, God allowed us to receive the forgiveness of sins with ease. Let me give you an example. There was a father who worked hard. He worked 8, 9, or 10 hours a day and even worked overtime. He worked his finger to the bone to make a living for his wife and children and to send his children to a good school. And he had a son who was ill at home. In order to have his son get well, he had to earn medical expenses too. So day and night, he even did the work that others did not want to do in order to prepare expenses for medical treatment. After going through extreme hardships, he was able to buy some medicine. If his son takes it, he will be cured from his sickness. What was the process like until the father was able to prepare the medicine? It was a very painful time. He had to get up early at dawn and came back home late at night, totally worn out. Though he was tired, he could not leave his son uncured. All parents want to save their children. The father earned the money through painful labor and barely was able to buy the medicine. What about his son? All the son has to do is to take the medicine and he will be cured from his sickness. In order to institute baptism, God suffered the crucifixion, was buried in the tomb, and was resurrected on the third day. He had to go through all these things. But what about us? Did God burden us with the suffering and affliction on the cross? No. What did He ask us to do? He only asked us to be baptized and partake in the bread and wine. Our God took all the sufferings and asked us to do nothing but be baptized and live by eating bread and drinking wine. 
in order to earn money to pay for the medicine. The father worked day and night, even hearing all kinds of words at work. The only thing the son has to do is to take the medicine and he will be released from the fear of death. What is this way that was made so easy for us? It is baptism. We should realize the fact that God's invisible great love lies in baptism. God takes a big burden and lets us just follow Him with ease. This is baptism. So how should we perform the holy ceremony? We should do it quickly. Whether they are baptized or not, they are free to do as they will. However, we have to explain and let them know God's love hidden in baptism. Let us always walk the path of faith with gratitude, never forgetting the grace of our heavenly parents. I hope you've received much grace through this sermon. Thank you very much.